Hey guys, today we are talking about the Diamondback DBX57 pistol. This is a 57 by 28 millimeter pistol, and this caliber has getting a lot of attention in the last few years. Now this pistol was released in 2020, and we did see it at Chacho 2020, and I really didn't think too much of it at the time. It wasn't something I really cared about because 57 wasn't that popular at the time. It just was the PS90 and the 57, but it's become so much more popular that we've decided we need to start focusing more on the 57. So let's jump into it. Now, the cost of this particular firearm comes out MSRP at 1352, but you can find it if you shop around for about 1100. Now, I think the cost of the gun fits the gun very well because the build quality is just great. I love how comfortable it is to shoot. And 5.7 is very similar to 22 Magnum and it doesn't really recoil all that much. Now, if you're looking at this gun, you might notice that there are a lot of similarities between this and the AR-15, which is great because that means that there are a lot of AR-15 parts incorporated into this gun. And that allows you to customize it more to your style and just not letting you leave it at a base firearm. And you really don't have to wait for any aftermarket parts companies because, well, it's AR parts. It uses a standard AR trigger. It uses a standard mil spec safety selector. And it even has a Picatinny rail and M locks on here. So if you want, you can really do anything you want. And on the back, it does have a Picatinny rail. So if you want to SBR it, that's pretty great. And 1100, it's not anywhere near overpriced because you are getting a gun that you can customize from day one any way you want it. Now let's talk about the pros and cons. The biggest con of this gun is that it's in 5.7. Something like 22 Magnum in ammunition cost when it's very similar. Well, I can tell you while I'm writing this that if I go online and I can pick up the American Eagle or Federal American Eagle, which is what we used in all of our testing, Full metal jacket, 50 round box, goes for about $47.99 or about 96 cents per round, which is a lot of money when you consider the price of 22 Magnum being around 40 cents per round. A big pro, as I stated before, is that this is so customizable. You can make this gun what you want it to be. It's got the side charging handle, which means you don't have to deal with the stock. Without a, a stock on here, the charging handle just kind of feels awkward to me. And if it's out, lock back to the rear, and you drop it, you're not gonna be worried about bending and breaking it. Another pro to this is that it does come with a dual piston action on its eight inch threaded barrel so that you can dial the gas to your suppressor. Another pro to this is that you can buy a 22 caliber long rifle can. So when you want to suppress this, you don't have to have a 5.56 can, which means if you're in the beginning of your suppressor collection and you're just starting out with a 22 can, it's lightweight at the end of your gun, not making this gun heavy and topple, and you don't have to drop six or $700 on the more expensive 5.56 can. Let's jump into testing. First off, we did use Federal Premium Ammunition with the 40 grain full metal jacket. That's all we ran through it during our testing. Mostly because our local suppliers did not have any other brands available that we could get at the time. Now while running that ammunition without a can, we had no problems with this gun. It ran flawlessly. We didn't have any 22 LR cans at the time, so we didn't really get a chance to suppress it on camera. However, we did have a 30 cal can, and we did notice that either due to the weight or some other reason, it's a suppressor. Anytime that the suppressor was mounted on this gun, it had hiccups. We have not talked to the manufacturer yet. We are waiting back from them to hear what exactly we might need to do, whether that's the gun or that is just the whole issue that they have. But that's where we're at on a 30 cal can. Now this does have a half by 28 thread, threaded muzzle device. So you can quickly remove that by taking a screwdriver or something else to just pop it off. Comes right off and about total we shot 150 rounds with not a single hiccup without a suppressor. 
I absolutely love this gun and I am so ready to SBR it and make this my go-to tractor firearm. So when I'm working on the ranch, I have a quick access gun that can take care of all of my varmint needs. Now let's talk about the specs. This gun, as I said before, does come with a dual gas piston that, and this gun is chambered in 5.7 by 28 millimeter. The gun is built on a 7075 aluminum frame. We do have the burnt bronze with the full finish. It does have the Picatinny rail on top, the M-lock all here, so that way that you can mount anything you want to it. It comes with an eight inch barrel. The twist is one and nine inch right-handed. And they do have their own muzzle device that they put on here. But again, you can mount whatever you want. The trigger is just a standard mil spec trigger, which means you can go and change it to whatever you want. The grip that we have on here is a Magpul MOE K grip, very thin. This is a semi-auto pistol that does not come with any sights. It does come with one 20 round FN 5.7 compatible mag. This one's made by Pro Mag, as seen on the bottom. The height of this gun is 7.3 inches. The length without any stock on it is 15 and a quarter, and the width is one and three quarters inch. With this gun unloaded, without optics, without anything else, comes out to three pounds, which is very light, but it handles a recoil amazingly, which is what you will expect from a 5.7. So let's talk about my final thoughts. I love this gun. It is a fantastic piece to add to my collection, and honestly, I can get a lot of use out of it. I like that I can use it on my tractor, and I want a holster for it, so that way that, well, not for concealed carry, but so I can keep my barrel and my gun out of the dust and dirt. Now, this beautiful color, and I don't know if it shows up really well, this burnt bronze shimmers and sparkles and looks really nice. One of the things that I do want to change about this is I do want to go from the 90 degree safety selector to a 45, and I need to get some extra mags, both of which are very easy. I'm not entirely sure which optic I want to put on this, which leads me to my question of the day, guys. What optic do you guys recommend I put on this? Something large like an EOTech, or should I go a bit smaller, like a micro red dot? Leave your comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys will comment, subscribe, hit that bell icon so you're notified every time we put out a new video. I hope you guys will also check out all of our social media linked below. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.